What is going on everyone? Welcome to 24-7 Football and another on the move for this week's transfer rumours including Thiago, Alexandra Lacazette and of course Jadon Sancho. Where is he going to end up? Who knows? Will United get it done in time? It's not going to go away this one. So we'll start with Thiago. Um, Thiago has been rumoured with Liverpool for, well ever since the transfer window opened really um, and He's 29 years of age. For me, one of the best midfielders in the world. I think we see, we see it with Bayern Munich. He's so underrated within that team. He just links up play. He's so versatile and his passing range is unbelievable. So when Liverpool were going in for him, I was quite, I was quite uh, jealous. Yeah, jealous. Because um, I thought, that is another piece to their jigsaw. It's another little bit of squad depth for them so they can rotate an already very good midfield and for 30 million under 30 million I thought it was an absolute steal for Liverpool but they've sort of stalled on the deal and there's been little murmurs saying that they don't want to pay the price for a player like Thiago and now it's been reported that Manchester City have moved in for Thiago obviously worked under Pep Guardiola at Barcelona and Bayern Munich um maybe not had the best of relationship since um ba since Bayern Munich but he definitely rates him I mean you wouldn't bring him from Barcelona to Bayern Munich if you didn't rate his talent and what he brought to a team um, and it really does seem like City could hijack that move why would they potentially need another midfielder you might be thinking are they looking maybe to move on Gundogan um, we know David Silva's leaving but we thought Phil Foden would be coming in to bridge that gap so I hope it wouldn't be a little bit of a kick in the teeth for Phil Foden um, where would Thiago slot in? It's a good, it's a good problem to have. I say this about a lot of transfers. It's a good problem to have. Um, but should Man City go in for Thiago? It's just another world class player on the books for the Blues, and it's it's scary to think about. It really is. Next up is uh, Alexandra Lacazette at Arsenal. Uh, I think Arsenal seem to be willing to sell. He's not. He's done, he's shown glimpses of what he's capable of at Arsenal. He's not really set the world alight you know when he was at Lyon scoring you know 30 goals a season everyone thought he was the real deal he came to Arsenal and he sort of I'm not going to say he's been poor because he hasn't there's been some games where he's been unplayable he's been fantastic but then there's other games where he's not hit the heights he's not been consistent enough for Arsenal um compared to Aubameyang as well especially and it's been it'll be hard for anyone to come in and try and take over Aubameyang but there's rumours that Juventus have approached Arsenal for a possible transfer now if Arsenal get the right fee and we know they're struggling financially a little bit as well um, it could be a move that suits all parties there um, Juventus in need of another striker um, they've got money to burn obviously Arsenal in need of um, some transfer funds and Lacazette, who doesn't really play that much at Arsenal, isn't the main man, could go to Juventus in a league that might suit his style more and he'll, he'll set the world alight. So that could be a move that suits all parties there. Now, it's been reported that Jack Grealish is going to hold crucial talks with Aston Villa over the next few weeks. I think Aston Villa staying in the Premier League definitely made this all-round situation a lot harder for Jack because I think that was his perfect excuse Maybe not for fans, but to himself, to leave Villa should they have been relegated from the Premier League. But because they're still in the Premier League, and we all know he loves that club so much, can he give himself an excuse to leave Aston Villa now? And especially with them still in the Premier League, Aston Villa are demanding a ridiculous sum of money. We know that the likes of Manchester United and Chelsea are interested, um, but it seems like Manchester United are the ones that are most interested in him at the moment. You can see they want to make... Uh, that squad a bit more creative and he's a homegrown English talent as well um, so it's, it's I think this one's going to be one that will just continue on whether Manchester United because we know what Manchester United are like with transfer negotiations in general they don't necessarily always want to pay the price that they've been given but it's a lot of money being touted over £60 million for Jack Grealish I mean it's he's a good player he's a good player but it's a lot of money for Jack Grealish and um, so we'll be keeping an eye on that one through the coming weeks we've also seen that Jordan Pickford could be out of the door at Everton and it that that is again that's something that I can see happening especially with a superb manager that is there in Carlo Ancelotti he knows what he wants and he knows what he needs to take clubs to the next level and to win trophies and 
from the World Cup, he just hasn't been consistent and you can sort of let it go the first few times, but he's been time and time again. I think he had the most errors leading to goals as a keeper up there with David De Gea last season. And to even say that about David De Gea is crazy. Um, but yeah, Jordan Pickford out of the door. Could they recoup some of the money for him? Probably, because he's still a youngish. He's 26, that's young for a keeper and he's English as well. I think there'll be a lot of clubs in the Premier League that would still take him on in the lower end of the table. But who would Everton go for in return? You probably think ooh, that off the top of my head, I'm not too sure what keeper um, Everton would go for, particularly in the Premier League at the moment. Not really too sure who they would go for. Everton fans, who would you like to go for? But Jordan Pickford seems to be on his way out of the club. Um, and there's another one as well, is that West Brom and Fulham are in the race for 24-year-old striker Ivan Tony. Now, Ivan Tony has been absolutely fantastic for Peterborough. And the fact that newly promoted Premier League clubs are interested in a League One striker just shows you how good this man is. Um, he can score from anywhere on the pitch. He's so powerful as well. Um, and I think... You know, Peterborough were hard done in terms of the playoff places and promotion. I think he would have stayed if they got up to the championship, but you can't expect a player like that to stay in, Le in League One. And I think their owner has openly said they will help Ivan to get a move as well, which is nice for them and nice for Ivan as well. And Premier League, it's a big jump from um, League One. But is it a risk worth taking considering he could... Well, for the, for the fee that you're talking about, he could really provide some crucial goals and then he seems like a bargain. And if he doesn't, it's not too much of a big deal because of the small sum that you're talking about. I mean, I say small sum. For me, that would be a big sum. But in terms of... In football relativity, it's not that big of a sum. And it's probably a low-risk move for either of those clubs. Uh, another one that we've been speaking about on the last show was that um, Leicester City are favourites to sign David Brooks from um, Bournemouth. Incredible talent again, young player, Welsh tricky winger, and I saw a few rumours that man, um, and I saw a few rumours that Liverpool were interested in him as well. But at this moment in time, Leicester are the favourites, and I've said this before: is David Brooks probably the winger that is going to? take them up to that height of you know regularly competing for Champions League only time will tell at this moment probably not but he's got a lot of potential as well but he could prove me wrong um, but as well as a squad player as, as what they need is that attacking squad depth I'd probably say it's a good move for Leicester um, but only time will tell whether he will be the business but you're talking about £30 million for him. He's not going to want to stay in the Championship. And you're going to see that a lot with Bournemouth stars. We've already seen Nathan Ake go to Manchester City. David Brooks here. Um, Callum Wilson. You know, Josh King. Are they going to want to play Championship football? I'm not convinced. Um, so, £30 million, A lot of money. But could we see David Brooks going to Leicester? Another one that we're going to keep an eye on. And finally, we're going to end on Jadon Sancho. Of course it's Jadon Sancho. Um, the man who is Manchester United's only priority target in the summer. They've made no questions about it. Everyone knows who Manchester United wants to sign. And I think we all know that Jadon Sancho would be open to a move to go to Manchester United. Now, it has cooled in recent days. They've even hinted at it on the socials as well. Things you love to see. Jadon Sancho's there in his Borussia Dortmund top. Um, we've seen this before with Borussia Dortmund. Usman Dembele, they said, they said the exact same thing. Um, and he ended up at Barcelona, and maybe it is a tactic to squeeze a bit more money out of Manchester United. You know, you're talking 120 million pounds for a hot prospect. 120 million pounds in this COVID pandemic, as well, is a serious, serious amount of money. He's he's definitely worth it. His stats back it up: 20 goals, 20 assists at such a young age. He's only 20 years old. He's a really exciting prospect, and one that you probably couldn't. Couldn't see failing. You prob he could fail, but I don't think he will. I think he'll be a superb buy for Manchester United. So the thing that confused everyone with this Jadon Sancho deal was that um, it was reported by Dortmund that they've got an option. Well, they, they executed an option on his contract, so he didn't sign a new contract. They executed a deal where he's there till 2023, which throws a little bit of a spanner in the works because he's not like he's going to be leaving anytime soon should United try to run his contract down. Um, Fabrizio Romano, who's 
everyone knows Fabrizio. He is fantastic at finding out the sources and the details of these little intricate transfers. Um, and he said the San Sancho situation, Borussia Dortmund have made it very clear they will not be selling for any less than 120 million euros or Jadon Sancho will be a Borussia Dortmund player next season. And I think that's very black and white um, for Manchester United. They have got to cough up that sum of money. Uh, Manchester United, a little bit frustrated at that. They're going to try and insist on a bit of a lower fee. But, you know, the ball's in Dortmund's court. They can do whatever they want with their player. Um, and... I think the thing to see is that you're always going to get little bits about it's cooling, it's not cooling, you know, it's not going to happen, it's going to happen. There's two months of this transfer window left. You've not heard the last of it, and this is probably going to go to the wire should Dortmund continue to play hardball because Manchester United desperately need this signing. Dortmund know it, we all know it, and um, yeah, I still think it'll get done but it's not the last we've heard of it. Um, so let me know in the comments below what you think of these transfer rumours, who you'd like your club to sign as well, who you'd like your club to sell at the same time. Um, thank you everyone for watching. Subscribe to the channel, uh, like the video, check out our website 247football.com. Thank you again and we'll see you next time. <laughs>